Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today we are going to be talking about Lanvin perfumes. So, um, I have had a couple of Lanvin perfumes in my collection for a while now, and there are tons that I've been wanting, and they're so, so inexpensive. On FragranceNet.com, you can find every single one of these fragrances for $20 or less. So, I got kind of wild, and I spent... I want to say right around the hundred dollar mark or maybe a little bit more a hundred and something dollars but I've got a ton of perfume here so we've got a lot to talk about I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in so the first one that we are going to talk about is called a clot de nuit so I should preface this video by saying if there is any house like designer house that I feel like makes really really good very crowd-pleasing um, safe, easy to reach for fragrances that would be that would be perfect for the workplace or an office. I really feel like Lanvin is that house. They just make the best, easy to reach for fragrances, in my opinion. So um, there's nothing groundbreaking about them. There's nothing special. You're not going to smell niche in any way. Uh, they're but as far as being fragrances that you know you can just grab and spray on and you're going to smell pretty and pleasing to others, these fragrances have got your back for that. They are so good for that. And the bottles are really beautiful. So the first one we're going to talk about is called Eclat de Nuit. So this is a flanker to uh, Arpege. And this is the original one. This is a Clot de Arpege, which is a flanker of the original Arpege. So um, this is a flanker to a flanker. And again, a Clot de Nuit. These have the most beautiful bottles. I just saw uh, Rose and Jones talking about the original um, Eclat de Arpege and um, she was talking about how beautiful the bottles are and they really are so beautiful. They've got these beautiful jewels on top and these really pretty kind of rings around them and then the bottles themselves are just really really pretty. Um, they're glass. This one is ombre so it's like actually it's not even ombre it's like it changes colors when you turn it so it'll go from a dark pink to like a kind of very very soft yellow really really pretty okay so this one is this one I really enjoy but it's not my favorite so this is Black Current Red Apple Belle de Nuit, which the only other fragrance I've seen Belle de Nuit listed as a note in is uh, Ghost Deep Night. So I think I really like that for that note. Um, other white floral notes, praline, woody aromas, and vanilla. So I thought that this one was, that I was going to really, really love this one. And I do. It smells really nice out of the bottle. But this has something in the base that smells very very I don't want to say generic but generic it is it's got a nice sprayer oh, that black currant though and when I say black currant it is true black currant like it's got the oh, it's beautiful it's sweet but it's got that kind of astringent quality to it that black currant has like that kind of tart astringent note to it this one is really pretty I'm excited to try this in the heat because I think it's going to be really nice like in the spring but um, not my favorite but still definitely a nice fragrance so that is a clot de nuit and these are all lanvin Okay, so the next one we're going to talk about is the original flanker, and this is Eclat d'Arpege. So, this is beautiful. This one on my skin, when it dries down, smells very, very similar to Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. Eclat d'Arpege is green lilac, Sicilian lemon leaves, wisteria blossom, peach blossom, red peony, green tea leaves, white cedar, musk, and amber. And... I have noticed that 
a lot of times uh, when perfumes have lemon or notes like that in them that they often get compared to Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. This one, on uh, the initial spray, smells nothing like Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. But when it starts to dry down, then that's when the similarities come out and it does smell quite similar to my nose. But this has a beautiful, fresh, purple floral quality to it that kind of keeps it from smelling too much like it. It's really, really beautiful though. I'm really, really happy to have this in my collection and I think it's just gonna be stunning in spring in particular. I think it's gonna be great for this fragrance. Okay, moving right along. The next one that we have is another flanker of a flanker. This is a Clot de Fleurs. So this is, this one's really, really nice as well. And this one again has the beautiful, this time it's a pink. Uh oh, one of the animals just started growling, sorry. Woo, I just had a bed delivered and I just dragged that thing in and unpacked it myself and now I am dying of heat. So if I'm looking crazy, that's why. Okay, so this is pear, jasmine, rose, freesia, white musk, and sandalwood. This one is beautiful. This is like a warm floral. Oh gosh, it's like sweet and a little bit musky and just a... Uh, just a really nice, easy-going floral that dries down to have a beautiful, like, slightly woody base to it. It's really, really beautiful. Again, just super easy to reach for. All of these fragrances are so easy to reach for and just would make really good, like, signature scents, office-friendly scents, things like that. Okay, so the next one is the original one that I had in my collection, and I adore this fragrance. This is called Modern Princess. I love this bottle. I just think that it's so pretty. It's this beautiful, very light pink liquid, and then it's got Lanvin in red on the front. You probably can't see it very well, but it's just a really beautiful bottle. And this is gorgeous. This is... Oh gosh, I love this. This reminds me a lot of Victoria's Secret Oh So Sexy, but this one is a lot better quality. So this is Pink Lady Apple, Red Currant, Jasmine, Freesia, White Musk, Blonde Woods, and Vanilla Orchid. And the most prominent note in this fragrance is the Pink Lady Apple. Oh, it's just gorgeous. It's like a creamy apple fragrance that is fresh and sparkling and just beautiful. It's gorgeous in spring and summer. I just love this fragrance. So that is Lanvin Modern Princess. Okay. The next one that I have is a flanker of Modern Princess and this is Modern Princess Eau Sensuelle. So I was reading that this fragrance is supposed to be based on the color nude. So um, yeah. <laughs> Out of all of my Lanvin fragrances, this is probably the one that I like the least. So this is Peach Accords, Peony, Jasmine, uh, Woodsy Notes, and Musky Notes. And this has a very generic, kind of like peppery opening to it, if that makes any sense. Like, to me, in perfumery, there are often times notes used when they want to make something smell like deeper but without having to use deeper notes if that makes any sense and that's what is going on in this fragrance it ends up just smelling very generic that whatever that is that they use is always so overpowering that it overpowers all of the other notes and it's just a muddled mess and that's what this one is, which I was so disappointed because I love Modern Princess so much. I was hoping that I was going to love the flanker to Modern Princess, but I actually really don't like this one at all. It's just not good. Um, yeah, just not good. And really not good on my skin, too. So, Okay, let's go to another one that is lovely. This is Jean or Jean Lanvin, and this is gorgeous. Um, 
I got the smallest bottles that I could possibly get because that's all I need, but this bottle is so pretty. It's got this really beautiful pink grosgrain ribbon on the front, and it says Jean or Jean Lanvin in a really beautiful purple, and then it's got the beautiful Lanvin kind of signature little picture, which I'm not totally sure what that picture is of. It looks like a mother and a child. It's just really... It's really, really pretty, but this fragrance, oh, this fragrance is beautiful. Um, this one is one that when you spray it out of the bottle, it smells like nothing. It smells like a wimpy little nothing, but when you spray this on your skin, that's when the magic happens. It is and it takes a little bit. You've got to give it about 10 minutes to get to the dry down. But once it gets there, oh, it is so pretty. And it's, again, nothing groundbreaking. It's not anything I haven't smelled before. But it's so, so pretty and really well done. So this is Blackberry, Lemon, Pear, Peony, Freesia, Raspberry, Rose, Sandalwood, Amber, and Musk. The blackberry is very, very prominent here, and it is, uh, it's bright and juicy, and it's lemony. It's like blackberry and lemon. Oh, and it's so stunning. This is another one I'm super excited to wear in the heat. I think it's just going to bloom and be gorgeous. Okay, so I saved the best two for last. The... First of the last two, and I'm sorry, I also scraped up my hand really bad when I was um, opening that bed. I didn't even feel it, so yeah, I'm like bloody, but I, and I apologize for that, but I gotta get these filmed before my daughter gets home from school and we start getting interrupted, so. Okay, the next one that we're gonna talk about is called Marry Me, and this is a stunning little bottle. This is... Um, I can't tell if, yeah, the lip, the perp, excuse me, the liquid is this beautiful lavender purple. It's got this beautiful lid and this really pretty, like, plum or, yeah, plum colored ribbon bow on the top. And then it just says, marry me on the front. And this is probably supposed to be like a wedding day fragrance, which I could totally see that being. I am going to do a wedding day fragrance video soon. I've been trying to get around to it. Um, that one's coming. I've got a spring, sorry, a winter spring transitional fragrance video coming. Um, I've got a lot of videos coming. I just have to, I, they changed my schedule at work again. So I am trying to find the time because I am having to work five days a week, Monday through Friday again. And then my husband and daughter are home on weekends. So that's really hard because I, it's definitely not quiet in the house when they're home. But anyways, okay. Marry Me is a bitter Tunisian orange, Sambac jasmine, peach. And peach is a running theme with Lanvin fragrances, which is funny because I do not like peach at all in fragrance. But in a lot of these, it really, really works. And it's like, it's just a beautiful added note. It's not an overpowering note. Like, I can't smell it, so that's probably why I don't mind it. But um, jasmine tea... Magnolia Blossom, Rose Petals, White Flowers, Fruit Zests, Amber, and Musk. And this is stunning. And I will tell you what this smells like. This smells very, very similar to my Orlov, um, Orlov fragrance that I just purchased. Very, very similar. Like, when this dried down on my skin, it smelled really, really similar. Now, the Orlov is stunning. It's rich in a way that this is not, but this is very, very similar. So like if you wanted to have that experience, but not have to pay that price, you can definitely get the same experience with this fragrance. And this would be a beautiful wedding fragrance. It's very floral. It's beautiful. It's romantic. It's a little bit sharp smelling, like, but sharp in a good way, like fresh. Oh, it's just really beautiful. Oh, goodness, I love it. Um, yeah, it's definitely the bitter orange that gives it that kind of sharp freshness. 
Oh. And the jasmine. You can get, you smell a little bit of the rose, but it's got the fruit zests in there as well, which is also giving it the fresh, um, kind of clean, oops, sorry, the clean, fresh vibe. And the more this dries down, the more it starts to smell like my Orlov. Oh, it's just really, really beautiful. So again, that is Marry Me by Lanvin. Of course, they're all Lanvin, but Marry Me. Okay. And the last one, this one is a stunner, and I'm so happy I picked this one up because I almost didn't. It doesn't have a ton of review. Well, it does, but I, I can't remember why. There was something about this that was making me uh, that I wasn't going to pick it up. Oh, gosh. Okay, this is called A Girl in Capri, and this is a beautiful little bottle. It's very heavy and weighted, and it's got this beautiful white and gold cap. It's just stunning. Beautiful little bottle. Like I say, I almost did not pick this one up. It's got a stunning spray on it. And when you first spray it, it smells like limoncello. Like a beautiful, boozy lemon fragrance. Oh, it is so, so stunning. So this is uh, Prima Fiore Lemon. I'm not sure what Prima Fiore Lemon is, but that's what it is. Bergamot, pink pepper, grapefruit blossom, marine accord, driftwood, white musk, and amber. And this is stunning. This is going to be like the ultimate summer fragrance. This is bright and citrusy and beautiful. It's fresh. It's sharp lemon and grapefruit. This is one of the best like citrus fragrances. Oh my gosh, it's so, so good. I'm so happy I picked that up. And like I say, because I'm usually not a huge fan of straight citrus fragrances, but this has a little bit of interest to it. It's got the marina cords in it and the driftwood, but it doesn't smell aquatic in any way. It just smells beautiful and fresh and citrusy, but like a unique citrus fragrance. Oh, it's so stunning. So somebody is thinks it's funny that I go from one nostril to the other but it's because it's like I get the smell up one nostril and then I feel like I need to go to the other nostril to get to smell it like fresh again if that makes any sense it's weird it's probably in my head but it makes sense to me I don't know <laughs> so anyways that is a girl in Capri and that is a stunner so anyways guys that's my kind of quick overview of the house of lanvin those are the fragrances that i have in my collection i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it helpful if you did don't forget to give it a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe before you leave and i will see you in my next video bye